So today I have a super cute little project for you guys. It is my Matildur collar or Matilda. My niece's name is Matildur, so I used to make these for her or I'm still, I still am. She keeps asking for more. <laughs> so these are a really quick, fun little make that I make a lot of these for, you know, baby's gift when babies are born. I don't know what you call this in English. Uh, so these you can make like a set. I usually will make like a set of three because these take like half an hour or something to make. So it's really quick and they come. The pattern is available in my Ravelry shop and on the website and it comes with three variations. You see this one here that is sort of like um, zigzag and then this one here that has a little peacock on the end and then the round one. I think I'm going to show you the round one today and they come in three sizes as well. Uh, zero to six months old, one to two, and two to four years old. Um, these here are all the largest one, I think, but this one here is made with a slightly thinner yarn. But it's easy enough to um, make it any size you want. You just have to chain up uh, the total stitch count of four stitches plus one extra stitch, and then you continue and go by the pattern, okay? So I'm using my usual go-to, Katona from Shepas. Um, you can use any kind of, I, I prefer using um, cotton for these. I have made some silk ones as well. Those are really nice. Uh, but obviously cotton is more practical because you can throw them in the washing machine. So I will try to use cotton that you can wash at 40 degrees just for, you know, the the new parents. It's, uh, you know, you don't want to add hand washing to their list. <laughs> Right. So uh, I'm going to make one here. You can from one skein, like each one takes about 10 grams. I just weighed this one. So I know. <laughs> so you get like four or five each uh, out of one skein of a 50 gram Katona or any similar cotton yarn and a, a three millimeter hook. So any fingering weight cotton which fits a three millimeter hook will do. And it's perfect for scraps. So let's just get started then. And. I'm going to make the smallest one here today, just so that it's a tad quicker. And we start by chaining up, let me see, uh, 69 chain stitches. Let the slow TV begin. <laughs> uh, I've been on my way to do a tutorial for this one for ages because it's such a nice little gift to make. So let's go one. So that's 69. And for the bigger sizes, then you chain up 73 or 77. So basically you just want a total stitch count to start with of four stitches plus one. And you can just pretty much see, you know, you can uh, measure this uh, if it will fit the child, if you have the child at hand. Uh, but this is for um, guidance, I say here. So it's like 30 centimeter long, the chain up for the smallest one, 32 for the one to two years old and 34 for the two to four years old. So, so that's uh, for guidance. Okay, so then we go to row one. Da, 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 da. Uyagasha. <laughs> um, let me see. And row one starts with extra three chains. One, two, three. So now we have a total of 72 here. Uh, 
and then one DC into the fourth stitch from the hook, right? Okay, so you remember that the one that's up on the hook, that one never counts. So we start counting after one, that one. So it's not this one, then we go one, two, three, and four, and yarn over and put our hook into the fourth stitch from the hook, like so, and work one DC here. And now we get to the repeat, which is skip one stitch and work two DCs into the next stitch. Okay, so we're going to yarn over, skip one, and do two DCs into the next one. And for the smaller size, then this is repeated 34 times, medium 36, and 38 for the big one. Okay, I did two here, and I'm again going to skip one and do two more here. And that's just the whole repeat for row one. I'm undecided if I should just cut and do this or chat a bit. <laughs> I haven't really talked to anybody today, so maybe I should just chat. I've had my morning coffee and may or may not have some Baylis in it. <laughs> but yeah, I love making these and it's... um. I made so many of these when my niece was born. She is now five. So, and the, the great thing is that they just continue growing with her. She uses them all the time. She keeps asking me for more colors. And for the tiny ones that I did when she was a baby, I would just add a new loop to it. So, you know, this one here at the end. And I would just make it a bit bigger. You can also put a, a scrunch, uh, not a scrunchie, how do you go, like an elast elastic thing for it. So they really grow with the babies which is lovely and it's always fun to make something first that the parents love and then when the kids grow up they love them themselves that's really nice I think she is also obviously the model for my for my Mathilder photos okay so we just go the whole row skipping one and into the next one two stitches now I am a very chatty woman but I'm not sure I will manage the whole row here just tatting along so <laughs> you see it's supposed to look like this oops always skipping one and two into the next one okay so I'm going to continue and go to the end all right <laughs> okay so I did almost the whole row here just four chains left so again, we yarn over, skip one stitch and work two double crochets into the next one. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, and again, skip one and two double crochets into the last chain here of the row. Okay, and so this was 34 repeats of this plus the the uh, the extra chains and the the double crochet here at the beginning so we should have 35 groups of two in this first row so moment of truth one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen Twenty, twenty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirty. One, two, three, four. I was, uh, I was uh, cut off. <laughs> My phone started ringing. I'm sorry. Be the two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, two, 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 four, five, six, Yes, it's correct. So I have thirty-five groups of two here in this first row and that's the first row all done okay so on to row two then and we are turning now I always like to do my chains before turning so we start row two by doing three chains one two three and you want to do these rather tightly this stands for the first DC of the row and now we're going to work two double crochets in between you see the 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 two, what I said, like groups of twos, you, I think you call these clusters as well in English, right? So we're always going to be working in in the chain space 
in between the, the two DCs that are together in a cluster, right? Not into the chain spaces here in between, because you see here, these two were not made into the same stitch, but these two are, right? Okay, so we start here in the beginning, in between these two here at the end, and we do two double crochets. One and two. And then we have a total of three double crochets here, counting the three chains here in the beginning as one DC, right? And now go, starts the repeat. And now we're going to skip the next chain space, this one here, that is not worked into the same one, right? And we're going to do two double crochets into the next DC space here inside the cluster. One and two. And then we skip the next space and go into the next one. And then we make three. One, two, three. So that's the repeat for row two. Two double crochets into the cluster. Skip one space, three into the next one. Okay, so now we skip one and we do two. One and two. Skip one and three. Right? One, two, three. Once more, we skip the space here that is in between the two stitches that are not made into the same stitch and we work into our cluster. We do two, one and two double crochets. Skip the next one and go into the next cluster and do three there. Always two and three, two and three, right? One, two, and three. Super easy and so nice to be always working into the, not into the stitches, but into the DC spaces, right? So we started with three and then we did one repeat. One, two, again, one, two, one, two. And I'm going to continue doing the same until I get to the end of the row. And then I'll show you how to finish row two. Okay, so I've worked my whole way around here, always working two double crochets into one cluster and three into the next one, Roop, all the way to the end. And now I have two DC clusters here left, one and two. So it's just the same repeat. Two double crochets, always skip the space here in between the clusters and then work into the cluster here. Two double crochets here. And then three into the last cluster here in the end, which is really a chain space because this is a three chains here that stand for a DC, right? So into the last space here, we do three double crochets. And two and three. And that's row two all done. And as you can see, it is already starting to form a circle. Whoop, whoop, two all done. On to row three, and now we start by making six chains. One, two, three, four, five, three, good, five, six, and we turn. And now we're going to yarn over and we're going to skip the first DC space here and go into the second one. So between the second two DCs here in the cluster, right? And do one double crochet here. Okay, and then we're going to skip the next DC space, which is this one here that is square, that is not worked into the same, and work into the next cluster two double crochets. This is the beginning of the repeat now. Skip one DC space and work two double crochets into the next DC space cluster. Okay, and again we skip one and we do one double crochet here. In between now we're working into the threes. So we do one double crochet here in the first DC space in this cluster, three chains and one double crochet into the next one, right? So yarn over, skip this one here, do one double crochet here in between the first two, chain three, and one double crochet in between the next three. So this is working into the three DC clusters, right? Okay, so we're gonna do this repeats again. This is the repeat two, into the same here, and then one, three DCs, one into the next one. Okay, let's go. So 
we skip the next chain space and go into the cluster chain space and work two double crochets there. And then we skip the next DC space and work one double crochet into the next DC space. And then chain three, one, two, three and one double crochet into the next space. So that second one here goes in. We're working into the three here, right? Here. Always into the cluster DC spaces, not in between them, right? Shall we do one more? The repeat is skip one DC space, two double crochets into the next one. Skip one DC space, one DC into the next one chain three and one DC into the next space here. Okay, so that's the repeat. Always when we're working into the two DC clusters, there we do two. And we're working in, when we're working into the three, then we do one DC, chain three and one DC into the other one, right? So we're making these chain uh, spaces here to work our final row, the fancy the row sort of <laughs> okay so i'm going to continue and and do this the whole way two double crochets into the two dc clusters and then one double crochet three three chains and one double crochets into the three dc clusters right all the way to the end and i'll show you how to finish okay so i'm not quite at the end but i was just thinking while i was working when i was hooking on this that now i remember why i like this so much it's <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy because, so you you don't really like once you make one you don't even have to you know look at the pattern or anything because it's really just sort of leads you on and so I will make you know at least three or four of these a night once I start I'm thinking I will be making a few tonight <laughs> because it's such a nice easy little pattern that you learn by heart very easily that being said the pattern is available <laughs> And I always very much appreciate your support in buying my patterns too. That is really something that goes a long way for me. So, very easy. Don't need to buy it, but you could. <laughs> I'm a great saleswoman. That's what I am. Okay, so here I am at the end. So I've done the same repeat the whole way. Always two double crochets here into the two DC cluster. And then one DC, three chains, one DC into the three chain cluster, in the three DC cluster. And now we just have one more repeat and we're going to do the same again. Skip one space, go into the next one, work two there in the two double crochet cluster. And then we have one three double crochet cluster left. And there we work, we skip this one and work one DC here in the first space, three chains and one DC in the last one. Okay, so that's row three all done. And it is a bit roughly, but that's okay because we're gonna block it later. Row three, all done. Okay, on to row four, which is the final row. And so we do row four and then there's the border row. So this is really a round, not a row, because we do first this here, the 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 frilly bit here at the end, and then we continue without breaking the yarn and work up here and over the beginning so that it has a nice smooth uh, look here on the top, right? Okay, so like I said, there are um, ba -ba -da -ba, three variations. There's this bubbly one, and then there's the one with the peacock, and then there's just one that is like zigzag. So I'm gonna show you all of them because it's really easy. But we'll start with the one that I'm showing you here, which is the version, the A version in the pattern, like the, the one that I'd made first. Okay, so we start row, round four, yeah, because this is round, not row, by chaining three, one, two, and three, and then we turn. And now we're going to work into the chain space here. We're gonna work seven, double crochets okay so we do one two three four five six and seven all into this chain space here where we did the three chain space right and now we're going to 
skip the next DC space, this one here, and work one single crochet here into the two DC cluster. Okay, so there's no yarn over. Skip this one, go into the two DC cluster in between those two, and work one single crochet, like so. Okay, and then we skip the next chain space, the next DC space here, and work straight into our our chain space here. And again, we work seven. Ba -ba -da -ba. Yeah, seven double crochets here into the chain space. So this is the repeat I can't really know. We've done one repeat, we're gonna do another one. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Skip one DC space, go into the cluster two here, chain space, and work one single crochet there. Yeah, you see how it's happening. Uh, before I, so this is the repeat for the whole. So you always do seven double crochets into the chain space, and then one single crochet into the cluster, the two, two stitch cluster here. Uh, to show you the other ones, this one here, then I just do, instead of doing seven double crochets into the chain space, then I will do, what, three, and then chain two, and then another three. So I'm just making this little um, edge here so that I can pin it out and in blocking, then it will look like this, okay? So we do, this is the version B then, okay? One, working into the chain space, two and three, and then chain two, and another three into the same chain space. Right, and you see then, then instead of it being round like this, then you get it like, and then just again, like before, skip one chain space and work this single crochet here in the middle of the two cluster space, right? And for the last version, it's almost the same as this one, but then we do this little peacock tip here on the edge. So again, we skip one and then we work into the chain space. And for the last version, version C then, we do three single crochets into the chain space. Two and three. And then here, instead of doing two chains like in version B, we do three, one, two, three, and then one chain into the third, into the third chain from the hook. Whoop, not chain, sorry, slip stitch. Whoop, whoop, like so. And then another three into the same. Whoop, mm -mm -mm -mm. like so, one, two, three, and always the same between skip one and one single crochet here into the two DC cluster. Okay, so here you have all three versions, if you can see. So this is the basic one, which is sort of like a bit romantic, you know, just with seven double crochets into the chain. Here I did six, uh, so three double crochets, two chains and three. And once you block these, then they will be more, you know, you just pin these out, right? And then the last version is the same really as this one before, but it has a little peacock here in the middle. So, I mean, it's minor variations, but what I love about this is I mean, you should make these in a set of three. And I do think it's really nice to be able to like have this little variation so that it's really a unique gift, you know, so you can make like a set and they're all a bit different. Like, I don't know, I like this kind of details. <laughs> so you just, you know, Pick one, I would say. I wouldn't be doing well. I mean, you can vary this pose as well. But I'm just going to unravel these two here then. I'm just going to finish mine off with the, the basic one, which is the most romantic one. Okay. So let's see that row for repeat again. So it's just then always skip one DC space here and work straight into the chain space. And we do seven double crochets. Two... Three, four, five, six, and seven. Skip.
skip one DC space and go straight into the middle of the two cluster DC space and work one single crochet there. And again, straight into the next big chain space and seven there. So this is a very easy, like the whole pattern is insanely easy, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no use to buy it. I mean, why would you buy it? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's fun about it, that it's easy and then still you have the variations. So you can do this set of three. And I mean, at least people are not complaining when I make these gifts. They're cute little gifts. Straight, field of sex, seven into each chain space, skip one space and one single crochet here in this DC space in the two cluster DC, right? And you just continue the same way and repeat this all the way to the end of the row. And I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you how you do the end of the row and then the uh, border row sort of like over the top of the collar, right? Off we go. Okay, so I've almost finished the row here, always just doing the same, working my 70 C's into the, into the chain spaces. I'm going to do the last repeat with you. So we're going to skip this one here and go into the chain space and work 70 C's there. One. And what you want to do is try and have this first one tight so that it won't be like, because we're sort of laying them down here with the single crochet in, in, the, in between, right? So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Skip one space, go into the next one to do into the two DC clutter, do a single crochet there. And this was the last repeat. And into the last uh, chain space here in the end, we're going to work eight double crochets. So right into the next one and do one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so that's really row four done, but we're going to continue and do the border row here, working over to the top here because so this, like we ended from this side, if you can see, so this here is not so neat because this is from the wrong side from where we started. So I wanted to end it and finish the, so everything is from the right side. All the stitches are from the right side, right? Uh, so we do not break the yarn in between now. We do this just continually, continuously. And we're gonna work up the side, over the top and down the side here as well, and do the loop as well. Okay, so now that we've finished the whole of the border here for the round, Four, for row four, we're just going to continue and work straight up the border row, going up the edge here, over the top and down the other edge, okay? And not cutting the yarn. That's one of the best things about this. There are only two ends to sew in at the end. Okay, so we're going to work these uh, single crochets up here over the, the border, the, the edge here. And we start by making one chain just to make a little corner here. And the first single, two single crochets, we're going to work around this first DC here. That the last one that we made, one and two. And then we're going to do two single crochets here into the chain space here, the same chain space we, we worked the, the last eight here. So one and two there. And then two around this double crochet here at the end on the edge from row two one and two so now we have six single crochets made it's a bit wonky now but it'll be ground once i block it and now we're up to the corner here the really the the chain space here in the corner and there we're going to make one single crochet one chain and two single crochets sort of to make a little corner there right Okay, so now we worked up the edge two here around the first DC, two into the, the chains, two around the other DC, and then one single crochet chain, two single crochets there. And now we're going to work over the edge. And now we're going to work two single crochets 
do, 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 into each space where you skipped a chain in the first row, right? Okay, so that's the first one is here. So now it's not going, now we're going to be working in between the DCs, like not into the DCs where we, where they're in the cluster, but in the other one, right? Where you skip the chain. Okay, so first one here, two single crochets here. Skip one space and go into the next one. And two single crochets like that into each and every space every other space. Skip this one into the next one. And what this does as well is sort of um, make the clusters go more together and form a better V. And like I said, it's so much more pretty to have the final row or rounds all from the same side. So we have the pretty, um, you know, it's all from the right side. Okay, so just skip one space, two into the next one. And now, as opposed to before, we're working not into the clusters, but in between them, right? where you skipped a chain in row one. And this you just do, oh, I love this row. <laughs> so much fun to finish, right? Always the borders and the sort of the final details. That's the, that's the good stuff. <laughs> Thinking about good stuff. I think I should have some Bailey's coffee. Cheers. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, oh, isn't this pretty? Oh, I love making this. I had made one for, one for a while and now I will... The good stuff also, the good thing is also, like, I like to have these ready at hand so that when there is a baby born, which obviously usually is not like a surprise or anything, but I'm not very organized. So I like to have these, a few like ready at hand to gift. And it's not just for newborns, like these are really good birthday presents as well. I would say mainly for girls, but uh, you know, who am I to, you know, you just do it for everybody who wants it. Uh, and these are so cute and they're so cute with dresses because you can really, you know, take dresses up and down and just with onesies as well. So it really gives that extra little cutie, cutie pie uh, edge. Cutie pie edge, is that like not a an oxymoron? <laughs> So always just two in between here, in between the clusters, not inside the clusters, you guys, in between the clusters where you skip the chain in the first row. I'm just going to chat us along this slow TV, rocking the slow TV. And we do this all over the top until we get to the other side. And then to the good parts for it later because I have to get into my granny's button box, which I inherited from her, and find a nice little button to put on it. And that's like an extra also sort of frilly touch. Can be you can take it down and up, up, up and down in, in, in a basic or, or frilly. Okay, almost to the end. This really is my favorite round. Wow, well, so it's just so satisfying to finish, right, isn't it? And did you see how quick this is? This literally is like 15, no, maybe half an hour. Half an hour, one. So you can easily make a set of three in, uh, in one night. Ah, okay, I'm going to take this here tail and just work over it a bit. So we don't even have to weave that in. I'm just going to lay it here and work over it. Do, 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 do for the last few stitches. Okay, two here, two here, and two here, and then we're at the corner. And what have I said here in the pattern that I should do on the corner? Aha, uh -huh. when you get to the other corner, work two single crochets there. Okay, so this is the corner here at the end one and two and then you're going to do eight to ten single crochet uh, uh, chains for the bottom hole one two three four five six seven eight and um you have to check really it depends on what kind of bottom you are going to use oh dear lord <laughs> that went well um ba -ba -da -ba, just um Let's pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> so.
So let's see. Mm -mm -mm. cute blue that's a good candidate should i have done this before um starting filming maybe perhaps perhaps am i just a happy little doc that i am filming and uh, working and doing a good job yes i am <laughs> oh i like this one this one's pretty okay we'll use this one Okay, so now I'm just going to see if you don't want it to be too big or too small for your, uh, basically, well, mainly not too small. You have to be able to get your your little button uh, inside, obviously. I think eight then is going to be enough. I'm going to see. I'm going to do eight now. And then I'm going to join this little loop into the first chain that I did. This one here with a slip stitch. Okay. And then I'm going to see if my button fits. Okay, the chain. Does it fit through? Yes, it does. Perfectly snug. So do check this out. <laughs> it's not nice to have that sewn on a button and then this is too small. You don't want that. Okay, so it's, but you know, eight to 10 chains there. I did eight now because this is a rather small one, right? Okay, and then we're going to go down this side here as well. And then we have finished. Ba -ba -da -ba. And we're going to do one more single crochet here into the corner. Like this. And then we're going to do six here down like before. Two into this one, two into the, into the, the this one and two here. Okay. Six single crochets here after. The corner one and two one and two and then two here one and two okay and then we are going to cut our yarn oh, this was quick and easy and satisfying and we're going to take it, pull the yarn out like so, and then we're going to work in the invisible join here at the end. Ba -ba -da -ba, and there is just one end to weave in. You're welcome, you're welcome. Ah, applause, applause. <laughs> so we're going to work now our invisible join here instead of the chain one that we did on the other side. So we're just going to go, I usually use the... Am I allowed to say the R sand of the needle? <laughs> uh, so that it won't split here under the two uh, loops here of the first chain here. Oop. Okay, and then into, again, into the one that we just finished, like so. And voila, we have a totally invisible join. You see? And now we just have to weave in around our one end. Mm -mm -mm. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Such fun, such fun. <laughs> okay, it's all looking good. Just another weave in there. Just always want to make two, do two movements here to be sure. Cut the yarn. The tail here we worked over. I'm just going to tuck it out a bit and cut that too. Et voila! Isn't it nice? Lovely. And now I just have to sew in my button here and block it. I'm going to go ahead and block it with you guys because it really is. I mean, it looks fine like this, but it really would look so much better once you block it and then it looks all pressed and fancy and nice. So I'm going to get my blocking mat and wet this here so that we can block this together. Whoop, whoop. 
Okay, so I've wet it. When you are blocking, wet blocking, you just wet it all the way through. And just don't wring it, you know, just uh, rather squeeze out the excess water, right? And with this one, which has the, the sort of shells, then we don't need to use very much pins. We just want it to lay down nicely. And it's mainly here at the end that I like to sort of make it look right. Are you seeing it? Oh, no, I'm going to put it down here a bit. Okay, so just have your pins ready. Uh, do take care to have ones that do not rust, like rust-free pins. And we just want it to be, you know, just smooth it a bit. I do like blocking. I love finishing. And I just get all my, my, um, can I say anal mess? <laughs> My um, uh, mm, meticulous uh, feeling out of the way. Okay, so we want these to be very straight here at the end, sort of. You don't really even need pins, but not for these, but maybe just a little bit here just to have it really nice. And this one here should go a bit in. The devil is in the detail. So I just have this so that it goes here over and, you know, fix the circle is looking awful. So just make it a bit straight and sort of smoothened out a bit so that we have a nice little circle. So it will be pretty once you gift it. And these here, just tuck it in a bit and maybe form them. For the other ones like these, when you have the little peacock or this, then you will want to, you know, put um, a pin in it and sort of um, pull it out when you block it so that you get more of a zigzag or peacock look. But th with these here, then you rather just want to sort of go over them and, and make sure that they are pretty. So pretty, so pretty. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yay! La 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 la. I think it's a tad wonky here, but no, I think it's rather good by now, right? And then you just leave it to dry and then fasten your little button on. Just sewing it with a thin uh, sewing, what do you call it, thread, obviously. And uh, et voila, you have a little Matilda color. Oh, isn't it pretty? Okay, I'm going to make like five more. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this, you guys. And I'm looking forward to see what you make. If you make little sets of these, I would be so happy to see if you share some pics in my groups or on Instagram. Just tag me and show me your little color makes. Uh, and yeah, happy weekend. Uh, over and out. Peace.